Good morning, everybody. I read a really interesting, uh, like, PDF article from the American Dairy Goat Association that was talking about salmon goats and how the average salmon goat should produce about 5% of its body weight per day in milk as like an average serratus lactation. Now how lactations work is they start off kind of low and then they get higher and then they kind of slowly drop towards the end. Now we're looking at basically your average 10 or 11 month lactation somewhere right in there. And uh, I was curious if this went across the board or if it was just with salmon because 5% seems like a lot. But it actually kind of makes sense because they eat, you're supposed to feed them 10% of their body weight a day. So 5% for the milk production and 5% for their maintenance, right? So what I did was I went to the other breeds sections in the ADGA, American Dairy Goat Association, and uh, I looked at the La Mancha's numbers and they didn't give it in percentage of body weight, they gave it in like pounds. And I turned it into a percentage of body weight and it was right around 5%. It was like just a little over, like 5.2, which the article did say at Sanon's can be a little over as well. So I looked up some other breeds and it was like 5%. I found a video on YouTube and they were talking about these goats that gave like 11 kilograms, which turned out to be somewhere around three gallons. I did this a couple weeks ago, so numbers are kind of fading. <laughs> and uh, they were didn't give how long they did that for. They were just showed a bunch of goats that that's what they were giving, and they actually waited out on a legal for trade scale, zeroed the bucket, milked the goat, and then put the milk on it. And so it was really cool. I've got links to all this stuff in the description below. And uh, theirs was way more than 5%. So what I'm thinking is, is that it was like peak production. Because I talked to a lady in another dairy once that was really happy because she had this goat that gave her three gallons in a day. And she was on record with the ADGA because she's part of the, the, the improvement program, Dairy Herd Improvement. And she was trying to sell me the granddaughter of that goat goat for a lot of money and it was just a little goat kid and I was like no no I'll buy the adult now I'm stuck <laughs> then uh, uh, what it was is we got talking and I was asking her how she got that goat to do that if she thought it was just genetic or if it was feed or anything like that and she said that it's uh, it was partially feed how she fed it she actually treated it like a queen she put it in its own stall because it had the most potential and it wasn't like with the group of goats. And uh, she fed it really well throughout its pregnancy. It was one of these things that she'd been doing for like two years to get it to do this. And uh, <clears throat> then she fed it corn silage and alfalfa and it had its own grain that was a higher percentage than what she was feeding the other ones because it's basically too expensive to make any money selling the milk to do it this way based off of the prices that were then. And uh, she got three gallons of it one day of its lactation. And she was really pleased with it. She said it normally gave her like two to two and a half gallons in a day. And that's what they call peak production because peak production is whenever its highest day is, that was the goat's peak. So that goat's peak production was three gallons a day. Ooh. But it actually ah, averaged sorry. way less than that. But still, she was really proud of it. And that's how that works when they're talking about peak production. So that was obviously more than 5% of its body weight because the average La Mancha only weighs like 130 pounds. It also depends on whether or not they're in good body condition. Like if they're real bony back here or their sides are sunken in because they're not getting enough food or if they got sick that year, they're just not gonna produce that 5%. So it depends on a lot of different factors. Tell them, they don't know. Okay. The different things that uh, can affect your lactation for better or for worse are things like, uh, like environmental factors, like shelter. If your goats are just, um, don't have access to a shelter, heading down the field instead of in a barn because they don't have one, uh, it can really negatively impact how much they lactate if the weather is not really nice because like they might be out there shivering it might be snowing on them it might be raining on them 
And whenever their body has to deal with putting energy into keeping itself alive, it's not going to be putting that energy into making milk. Also, if you're in a place where it's generally really hot and really sunny, if they don't have access to shade, they're going to be like sweating all of that out. They're, they're going to be panting and having a hard time uh, <clears throat> basically dealing with heat stroke and different things like that because they're affected by the elements very similarly to how we are. And they can die from the elements just like we can, but normally in a milk goat, the first thing you see is you see their production drop. So you really want to make sure that for where you are in the world, you have adequate uh, shelter, shade, protection from wind, snow, rain, whatever it is, elements that are thrown at you where you are, you have to have proper shelter for it. Uh, the next thing that can really affect it is nutrition. You can be feeding them 10% of their body weight every day, but if it's something that they don't get enough pro uh, protein from, or the right nutrients for making milk, to where they're actually malnourished in one way or another, even if they don't look it, they're still going to produce less milk than the goat who's getting the feed that gives it what it needs, or that's more digestible. Uh, See, like you can feed them 10% of their body weight and like mixed grass hay every day, but the goat that's getting 10% of its body weight in like uh, a little bit of alfalfa, a little bit of mixed grass hay, and some the various different grains or greenery is probably going to make more milk than the goat that's just got mixed grass hay. So variety is the spice of life, basically. I've done grain free and I didn't get anywhere near the 5% number. Uh, the goats actually did very poorly. Your average was a quart a day for a full size La Mancha goat. Um, there's probably things I could have done better at the time, but uh, grain free is really difficult because it's hard to provide them with enough nutrients in the course of a day when you're not feeding them the. Uh, basically the seed of the plant, which is like the, the wheat berry and basically cereal grains. I know a lot of people don't like it, but that's why they call it a concentrate, is because it's not that anything is done to it. It's not like concentrated juice. Donkey, you're in the way. <laughs> it's just, uh, they call it a concentrate because the nutrition is concentrated into a smaller bulk. It has a much higher nutrition for the, for the quantity eaten. She's a ham. <laughs> yeah. So you can feed them like a couple cups of grain while you're milking them and they'll get a whole bunch of protein and stuff depending on how it's formulated from that that it would take them all day to get out here if they even manage to get it. There's also a difference between pelletized grains and whole grains because pelletized grains they don't hold their nutrition as long because once you break up the whole grain, the nutrition starts leaching out of it. And also, they only store for about six months as opposed to being able to store for a year. But the benefit of having the pelletized grain is you can actually put detergents in it that help maintain their gut culture better. And you can put probiotics in it that help them digest everything better. And you can... Uh, you can add, you can bring the protein up by adding more high protein grains and balancing it more specifically. And they can make it more palatable by putting like a little bit of molasses on it and stuff like that so that the goats really go nuts for it. Basically there's ups and downs to everything you feed and it is going to affect your milk production in your goats. The next thing that's going to really affect the lactation is the water source. If your water doesn't taste good to them, or if it's cold water in the dead of winter, they're just gonna barely drink enough to keep themselves alive because it's like going out in a blizzard and drinking ice water. You just don't really wanna do that. You wanna go out in a blizzard and drink hot chocolate. <laughs> and a goat, to a goat, warm water, like 100 degrees, 120 degrees, is like hot chocolate to them. They just gobble it down. So you can get them to drink the gal gallon to a gallon and a half of water that they need to drink in the middle of winter to produce milk by providing them with warm water. Or you can provide them with cold water that you just bust the ice off of and scoop the ice out every morning. And they're gonna drink, you know, the, the minimum survival ration, which is probably somewhere around a quart to a half gallon, 
that's going to be enough to maintain their body, but it's not going to be enough to give them extra fluid for making milk. If they like poop in it, they're not going to want to drink it, so you're going to need to keep a clean water source. Uh, goats don't seem to have a problem drinking out of ponds, but you know, in the winter when it ices over, that can be a real problem because baby goats will run out on it, and if it's not iced over very thick, they fall through and drown. Unless you want to do what Noelle did and go for a swim to save them. <laughs> so, that can be a whole thing. Uh, so, we try to keep them away from ponds. We lock baby goats up and don't let them out to graze when the ponds are lightly iced because they do that. The next thing that really affects their lactation, especially in summer, is uh, pests, external and internal parasites. If the goat is covered in ticks or fleas, they're going to be scratching so much that they're not going to be so focused on itching and they're going to have, their body's going to be focused on replacing that blood from those blood suckers. Uh, if they've got internal parasites, a lot of those, they either, they either eat the goat's food for it before it gets the chance to really digest it so they don't get as much nutrients out of the feed that you're feeding them. Or there's actually like the barber pole worm burrows in between the layers of the uh, stomach liner and attaches on and sucks blood out of the goat. They can actually have so many of these worms that they can die from blood loss. And they, they call it, uh, you can see an exterior symptom of bottle jaw where the bottom of their face swells up and then they just fall over dead. And if you look at their eyelid, it's completely white. It's almost blue, it's so white. That's barber pole worm. The other thing that's a bug that can affect them is actually your common fly. Your common fly will get all over their, their eyes and try and drink the goo out of their eyes and they'll constantly be going like this. And when they're going like this all the time, they don't eat as much. Their eyes bother them. A lot of times flies will give them pink eye and then the infection will lower their milk production and you have to treat it. It's the whole thing. So a good fly spray or something like that for dairy animals is can actually really increase your milk production that way. Uh, after that is whether or not they've kitted. <laughs> there is such a thing as a maiden milker, but they don't normally produce a lot of milk. And a lot of times maiden milker doesn't necessarily mean they haven't kitted. A lot of times it's like a false pregnancy or they miscarried and they're getting given some milk to you from that. Uh, but it's not normally a full lactation. Uh, another thing is how long ago they kitted because like I said earlier, uh, a milk production is not a straight line. They don't just start giving you a gallon and keep giving you a gallon or 5% of their body weight or whatever. They, they start off low, they go up high, and then they slowly taper down. How old they are also affects their lactation. The goat that's younger than four years old typically produces less than the goat that's from four through its sixth year. So basically from four to seven is typically the prime years of a lactating goat. After seven, they start producing less. That's why a lot of times you'll buy a goat that's like two or three years old so that it has time to adjust to your farm and your management system before it really heat hits those peak productions. Because sometimes when you bring them in, their production will drop instantly because everything is new. After seven, they typically start decreasing in production, kind of going back to the production of their youth from like one till four until they reach the double digits and then they basically stop making enough milk to keep any kids they have alive. And in our experience, after about 14, they don't kid anymore. So, <laughs> that's all the things I can think of right now that affect their lactation majorly. So a lot of their lactation is in your control uh, about basically management practices. Everything else is an act of God. A lot of people blame it on genetics, but in my experience, you know, you cross a a milk goat with a meat goat and you go and you milk that goat and it's like 200 pounds you're expecting five percent of that because it's a prime point in their lactation you're getting a quart to a half gallon that's like 2.4 percent maybe <laughs> so genetics could play a factor there like meat versus milk but in my experience so long as you're breeding milk goats together your genetics are fine anyway i hope this helps understand uh averages and basically it's a really good way to look at it and go, if I'm buying 
a Nigerian dwarf that weighs 50 pounds and looks really good, how, about how much milk am I going to get averaged out over the course of its lactation? Typically that number is around 5% of its body weight. And it's going to eat about 10% of its body weight in feed every day. And if you don't give it that, the amount of milk that it produces will be loose, less. So <clears throat> if you're buying a full-size goat, you can get about how much it weighs to know about how much milk it should produce. But like I said, there's a lot of factors involved. Have a great day, folks!